Hello, uh, this is Michael McKinlay from IT for Arts, and I'd like to introduce a talk given at a workshop on social media in February 2015. The workshop was organised by IT for Arts. To learn more about us, see the URL below left. And to learn more about our livery company parent, the Worshipful Company of Information Technologists, please see the URL on the right below. This was the agenda for the day, and we have circled the speaker you're about to hear. This was one of many interesting talks on the day, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, so hello, I'm Brian Nelson, I'm Digital Manager for the Barbican Centre. How are you today? It's a question we ask each other all the time. How do you feel? Uh, how are things going? If you're Northern Irish like me, uh, what's the crack? Um, but it's not really a question we ask our audiences. We tend to ask them what do they think, not how do they feel. And yet they're telling us all the time how they feel. They're telling us on Facebook that Harold and Maud is their favourite Valentine's film. They're telling us on Twitter that they're excited about VR Villagers coming. And they're telling us on Twitter that they collect weird sex toys in hate mail. And I kind of want to know if those two things are linked. Um, all of this stuff is data. We may not think of it as data. It's not numerical. It's quite subjective. It's quite fluffy. Uh, it's not really measurable or recordable, we think. Uh, and yet, actually, at the end of the day, it's data. So if it's data, we can do stuff with it. We can manipulate it, we can use it, and we can tell stories. So what did we do with this data? This is the dull bit. Uh, we were approached by the Technology Strategy Board to uh, come up with a challenge for a £25,000 innovation fund. Uh, so our challenge was, how do you uh, enable an audience who knows nothing about the arts to explore our vast program? We put on 4,000 events in 2014 across 40 different venues. And if you aren't in the know, it's quite hard to penetrate that. So agencies were shortlisted, they applied, a final three were presented, uh, we selected one, and it was the Project Factory who came up with Sentiment Search for How Do You Feel? And it does exactly what it says on the tin, it allows an audience to search events, not by what they are, but by how they feel. So, as an example, if I want to experience something haunting, I will click something haunting, and I'll be represented, uh, presented with the Vaktangov uh, production of Onyegin, uh, Anika Muley, uh, Contemporary Weekender, and a multimedia opera of Alice in Wonderland. These three events would never normally be grouped together. They transcend continent, century, art form. Uh, but here, they're presented uh, in a very emotional, subjective connection, the fact that they'll all make you feel haunted. Uh, what's also interesting is the same event will appear under different words and sometimes conflicting words. So. Alice in Wonderland appears again, it's not only haunting, it's also quirky. So you get this layering of information where the different events uh, are here with different emotions. How does this work? So the Project Factory, who's the agency, licenses a Twitter script, which goes through all of Twitter and gives us every reference to the Barbican Centre. They then anonymise the tweet uh, and identify the adjectives within it. So in this example, which is a lovely tweet about our most recent exhibition, uh, it's highlighted the words. Now, I don't really like the word cheap here, uh, because it's not actually describing the exhibition, and it's not that cheap. Uh, so I'm going to reject that from the system for the moment. Uh, not because it's a bad word, I'll come back to that, but just because it's not that accurate. But I love the word kitsch. I feel kitsch 90% of the time, and I want to feel more of the time. I think other people should feel kitsch. So I want, really want people to be able to search on that. So I'm going to enable that to appear into the system. Uh, the eagle eye of people have spot a problem here. Uh, <coughs> what happens if we don't like one of the words? This happened. On our last exhibition, somebody described the exhibition as depressing, and the curator was not pleased about this. <laughs> and we had to explain that it was a really valid response to it. It was about the spread of urbanisation in the 20th century. It's pretty bleak. Uh, so we reject words from the system that are inaccurate, but we allow words that are uh, negative emotions. In terms of the value of this, it's actually quite hard to define the value because it's on a separate system, it's a beta site, but qualitatively, we've had some really lovely responses. My favourite being, it's made of concrete, but it has a heart. <laughs> uh, we often get accused of being quite a stone-hearted organisation. So this was a nice way of putting emotion first. That's certainly a bit of search in a nutshell. Apologies for the photo, I've run out of ideas by this point. Um, I realise this idea isn't replicable for every organisation. This was a £25,000 fund. Other people don't have as massive programme. So I want to talk about some of the lessons that maybe came out of this and different ways of working with social. So the first one is, Telling different stories with our data uh, and with social. Most of our social activity still lives on social. We respond to people on Twitter, we keep it there. And what I think this project did was about taking social out of its third party platforms and reusing it in different ways. So embedding tweets onto event pages, putting them up, oh, I've just skipped past, uh, putting them up around your building, 
putting them into print material, MoMA and Book of Mormon, two very different cultural events, are really good at putting their social activity into their print work. The second one is talking about our events and collections in different ways. I'm going to put up a slide of a piece of copy that existed on our website when I joined the market. Okay. If you can read it in 20 seconds, never mind understand it, I will be impressed. This is the way we as the Barbican intended to talk about our events program. And what we've, this project has actually done is moved us away from very cerebral ways of thinking to quite emotive ways. And what you should really be doing is telling your audience what they're going to experience. How are you expecting them to feel when they come? Not the fact that it's that. Uh, the third one is making different connections. So we often group our events around really logical, sensible things like seasons, artists, genres, uh, artistic periods, and that's fine if you're in the know. But if you don't have a clue about any of that, it can be quite alienating. But what about making different and new connections between events? So 25 artworks that contain cats, or 10 theatrical heroes who just can't even. What, about, what are the sort of different connections or ways you could group events? Um, I can tell you're all trying to solve that now. So I'm going to finish up. Uh, that's my email address. I'm also on Twitter, online John Nelson. I mostly tweet about Great British Bake Off and Angela Lansbury. So you probably don't want to follow me. Uh, that's it. It was a quick emotional journey. <laughs>